But rather than look at me, I'm looking at you and, and saying that, that you're the problem. Mental health growth starts when we can own our stuff. The question is, what is my part in this? Mm -hmm. N again, none of us is the innocent. What is my part in this? Mm -hmm. D uh, did I attract some of this by my negative thinking about myself? Mm -hmm. Because, you, you know, you can... <laughs> You can change mates, go to another country, you know, get, get, get another job and still in there with the same uh, dynamics wherever you go until you change. You're going to attract the same kind of mates wherever you go until you do something different with you. So Brother Allstar comes in there and he says, he's not saying I hate a lie and a thief. But what he is saying is that's not true. And he's telling his son. That's not true. Um, watch out for that. Is that the same thing as saying, I hate a lie and a thief? Well, I think what you're really saying is, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I, I like that better because that's saying, this is where I am. Mm -hmm. This is how I see it. Mm -hmm. And you have a right to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can share that with whoever you want to share it with. But to call it the ultimate truth or the ultimate lie, um, I think that's setting up that dynamic of right and wrong that we fight about so often. We get caught up in, I'm right and, and you're wrong. And the truth of the matter is, few of us are 100% either way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you still have the right to say, I don't like that, or I don't believe that, or I don't participate in that. So, you know, so the idea is like, so he, someone's saying, here's gasoline, drink this, and uh, you'll live 20 more years. And I know it's gasoline, and I say, you drink that, you might die. Mm -hmm. Then we'll, you know, I mean, that's just a fact. Um, facts or social agreements. <laughs> I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know that everybody, everybody on the planet can't drink gasoline. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. I know I'd be concerned about you drinking that. Mm -hmm. I, so you will likely die. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Your perception, again, moving from the emphatic, meaning from this the way it is, when you say these hard facts to, mm -hmm. you know, this is the way I see it, mm -hmm. and I'm offering it to you, and then, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. But when we cut those hard lines, the, what we encourage is defensiveness on the other side, and it mm -hmm. breaks down communication. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's interesting, Doc. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on. Are you saying that there's no, that there's nothing that you will want to tell your child not to do? Um, oh, there's a, lots of things I would tell them I, would, I don't want them to do. Yeah. I'm saying like, like, for example, you say, well, if you take this gun <laughs> and you pull this trigger, you know, uh, it's likely that that bullet might go through your brain and kill you. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of advice? I know this is extreme, but it's some, you know, because I know lots of things and I get the idea of some things, most things that we argue about are not necessarily um, in the spectrum. So, if your child has a gun mm -hmm. and has it to his head, and you just tell him, greetings, family. Dr. Dennis Saw Winkler back at you again. Uh, still haven't found exactly what we're going to call these segments. But again, we're kicking it off with Dr. William Henry Gregory. But nonetheless, Dr. Gregory called me um, probably the day after we shot the first part of this. 
And he said, I left about 50 years of my life out. 50 years of um, my evolutionary process and trajectory. So, Dot, where shall we pick up? <laughs> yes, yes. You know, when you, say, when you asked me, you said, uh, who are you? Mm -hmm. And I started from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, you know, all of that was totally significant. Mm -hmm. um, but there's more to it. Yes. So I want to pick up from at the time I left home. Um, I'm 19 or 20, mm -hmm. moving to my first apartment. Um, and um, I, I'm a typical young adult in that um, I'm working part time, going to school a little bit, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of partying, mm -hmm. a lot of partying, drinking. You could stop down at an apartment Tuesday night at at two o'clock in the morning and be something going on okay. you know, like that and did that for a minute. I, I called it. We, we, we got our education in, in, in street life. Okay. Okay. So um, got certified. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. But then at a point we knew we had, had to move on. So I moved as far away from the community as I could. Which was at that point was way out north, north northwest Baltimore. Got an apartment. Mm -hmm. um, eventually got married, settled, settled down, stopped drinking. And um, I remember when my kids were small. I remember my first house. And I'm spending a lot of time just in the house, being still, uh, hanging out with this guy named Bob, uh, Bob Marley. Okay. Just listening to Marley's stuff mm -hmm. like that. Then one day, I'm back in my old community, down by Coppin, and I'm walking through, and I ran into a guy, an old buddy of mine I hadn't seen in a long while. And we just started talking, and you know things were flowing. And he said to me, he said, he said, look, you got a minute? I want to show you something. Can you can, can you do go somewhere with me? I said, okay. So we go up by the racetrack. Uh, Pinnacle Racetrack, and there's a health food store. It's called Brothers. It's run by a couple, Ross and Noni Ford. Okay. And in the back of it, in the back of this um, health food store, they're doing this meditation process with this fire called Agni Hotra. And we sat down and participated in it, and um, it grabbed me. It grabbed me, and I started taking classes with uh, Fred Clifton. Uh -huh. um, and um, being part of what was called the Baltimore Fire Temple, uh -huh. where we did this Agni Hotra, this sunrise and sunset um, purification fires daily, mm -hmm. you know, burning certain organic materials, uh, cow dung, and saying Vedic mantras, and all three of those things combined to shift the energy, mm -hmm. to to make uh, to to counteract pollution, and to settle the mind so you can go deeper within, mm -hmm. so you can go deeper within. So I start to hang out with these folks. Because what happens at every stage of development, part of the task is to find your people. Find people who are like-minded, who are working on some of the same stuff that you can relate to, get support from, like that. So I started to hang out with them. And then we, at a point, we noticed that a lot of us were in mental health field. Mm. And a lot of us were in mental health field. And as a result of that, um, First, some of us were working with what was called the East Baltimore Community Corporation. Mm -hmm. And I think my first job was at the East Baltimore Substance Abuse Program. And then we started Baltimore Family Life Center. Based on working with people, doing these fires, and working with people using a lot of the same principles that we were got 
from our study of uh, Ayurveda uh, of, or the Vedic science of bioenergy, where these fires came from. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so some, some real basic things came out of that as we were doing foster care, behavior, health, and um, all of that. So, some real basic things came out of that. And, and while this was happening, while I'm making this transition from being at home and, and then studying the Vedic sciences, I started going to school and I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I went to what was called Baltimore Junior College then, mm -hmm. you know, and I thought I'd study this new, um, this new uh, vocation called uh, computer programming. Because mm -hmm. I'm from a technical family. Mm -hmm. my, my father, my uncle, my grandfather, they could, they were all master mechanics, could build anything, mm -hmm. fix any kind of appliances. My, my, my siblings, my brothers, two of them are com computer programming. My brother's a lawyer, also did engineering and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'd go, go do this, you know, except for one problem. That semester, um, I failed every subject except one. I, c I couldn't stay awake in front of a computer. It just wasn't me, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, this was an issue for me in that I, I never had the inclination toward technical stuff that my family, much of my family did. Mm -hmm. And when my brother said he, 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 he dreams in, in numbers. I a daughter who's an uh, uh, aerospace engineer, you know, that kind of thing's coming. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't me. I tried it, but it just wasn't, wouldn't hold my attention. So I stopped CCB after, you know, failing out that, that first semester. Mm -hmm. And I only passed one subject. It was called psychology. Mm -hmm. So I transferred to Morgan. Mm -hmm. And I had some people who had been calling me counselor since I was 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, maybe that's my calling like that. Mm -hmm. I say that to say, I see so many young people now struggling because they don't fit into the boxes, mm -hmm. you know. But everybody is made to do something special and unique. Mm -hmm. And the issue is helping them to find that. And that was one of the things that I got from our study of the Vedic sciences, Agni Hotra, and what we call the fivefold path. Mm -hmm. it, some real basic assumptions we started with. One is that all people are innately good. We may not act like it all the time. We may not realize it ourselves, but everybody has goodness is, a, is from divine source within. So when you work with a person, no matter what they've done, going through or whatever, you know, it helps if you can see the goodness in them. Another assumption is that everybody has good intentions. You know, you can go back to stuff like, um, Rogers stuff. Everybody's trying to meet their needs. Mm -hmm. They may be doing it in some unhealthy ways, some unacceptable ways. It doesn't mean they're unaccountable, but if you go deep enough, they're trying to meet their needs, whether their need is to have some agency or power, or the agency is to, to, to um, take care of their physical needs or uh, the emotional needs or be connected, whatever. They're trying to meet some needs. And if you recognize that, then you can see the goodness in the person and understand that they're trying to meet needs. It means you can work with them in, in, in an affirming, competency-oriented way rather than looking at deficits or what's wrong. And there's one more assumption. People are divine in nature. People have good intentions. And everybody has what they need inside of them. So as an interventionist, a psychotherapist, I don't have to go and make something new up for somebody or, 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 or create something different. The issue is to help them go deep enough to identify what they already have working for them and, and help them to process how to use that and where that's going to lead them. Because again, it's, it's, a, 
it's a, a, a statement of faith to understand that everybody has what they need inside. They may not be aware of it because they've been traumatized, they've been socialized a certain way, uh, they have certain habits or, or whatever, and you, you have to work through some of that to get to the essence of the person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the assumption is that people have what they need inside. And our job is to help them on the journey toward realization of those talents, skills, abilities, competencies, and even mission in life. So these are the assumptions of what particular school of thought? Uh, of uh, the Vedic science of bioenergy, the one that we call the, the fivefold path. Okay. And you mentioned something. Um, and and the, the models that came out of that. The models that came out of What was the name of those, of those models? Starting with enriched structural family therapy. Enriched structural family therapy. That's what we developed at the Baltimore Family Life Center. Okay. So our director, my mentor, Ross Ford was originally from Philadelphia. His older brother was a clinician also. And you might have heard, you've heard of structural family therapy, Salvador Mnuchin, yeah. the psychiatrist from um, Australia, not Australia. I think um, El Salvador. Who developed structural family therapy. Mm -hmm. He developed it by watching uh, Ross Ford's brother and his staff work with young people in their families who were in a juvenile institution. So Mnuchin and his people would sit behind the mirror and watch them as they worked with these people, with these young people and their families. And that's how they codified the structural family therapy model, okay? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, if you look at if you look at the book Family of the Slums, one of Mnuchin's primary texts, it's dedicated to R Ross's brother. I forget his first name, but his last name is Ford. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he developed that model, and we we, we interacted with Mnuchin. Sometimes we'd go up there, and, and he'd come down here and consult it. But we took the model even further. It's not just about providing structure and support, but we added two a couple of different components to it. One was called kinship love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kinship love being the, the emotional connection that happens in families. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <laughs> when we are connected, supportive, encouraging of job, we all need nurturance to maximize our potential. Mm -hmm. And so kinship love supports that nurturing factor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kinship love. Kinship love. Then the other, the, the third component, the structural, the structural fam family therapy, there's kinship love. And the third one is uh, total love parenting. Mm -hmm. It's a system of parenting that, again, is positively oriented, that, that, that has skills in it that, that help nurture children, help them to, to um, have structure, limits, guidance, and to be accountable at the same time in, 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 a, in a theater and an interaction that's based in love, support, and acknowledgement. So it's not about punishment. Punishment is the last piece, but it's about guidance. It's about structure. It's, a, it's about helping them to be emotionally competent like that. So that was the foundation of enriched structural family therapy mm -hmm. that we developed at um, at the Baltimore Family Life Center mm -hmm. while we were working with these high-end um, foster children who had been out of state. A and now they were coming back in state. We were working with them in the community, in our homes. Mm -hmm. Some of them are still connected, wow. connected to us. And that was... I could say that was 50 years ago, okay? Yeah. It's while we're doing that now, while we're doing that, one of my colleagues gets a call 
from some people in D.C. who want some training in family therapists, because that was what we were known for doing family therapy. And he couldn't do it because of a conflict. And he asked me, uh, Brother Richard, Richard Norman, he asked me if I would do it. I said, OK. So I go down there that summer and I go down two or three times and teach them enriched structural family therapy. Like that. Next thing I know, in about um, November, I get a call from them saying their clinical director has moved on and asking me would I apply for that job. Uh -huh. So I did. I did. And I ended up staying there 23 years uh, and helping to develop another model uh -huh. that came out of the same foundation called into psychotherapy that's based on an Afrocentric understanding of behavior using much of, of the verbal nomenclature uh, from the Bantu of Central Africa, like that. And we developed that model. And you know, when I came to when I came to that center, there were eleven clinicians. Mm -hmm. Everybody was in DC. But during the twenty three years expanded to um, Baltimore County, no, no, uh, two counties in Maryland, Baltimore City, Delaware, Pennsylvania, um, as well as Ghana and West Africa and, and Zambia and Central Africa. And so it was my job to go all over these places and, tr and train the staff in this model because you had to be um, certified in this model to, to work there like uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. So all of that evolved out of this, this practice of um, what we call Agni Hotra and the fivefold path. Oh. And just quickly, when I say fivefold path, I'm talking about the f number one being Agni Hotra, purification of the atmosphere using this fire process. Okay. Number two is uh, what we call Donna. Donna is um, sharing of assets in the spirit of humility. It's the assumption that nothing belongs to any of us, that each one of us is caretakers. And whatever we have in our possession, at some level, we have the obligation to share it responsibly. Mm -hmm. Now, just think if that was being done worldwide. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have 40,000 people starving to death every day. We wouldn't have poor people over the planet because we would all be just sharing what we have in a way that meets everybody's basic needs. So that's Donna. Num number three is Tapa. Tapa is self-discipline. Anything, uh, any comp accomplishment one makes in life requires some self-discipline, whether it's studying for a test, whether it's uh, 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 getting hygiene, taking care of your hygiene, and, and, and getting clear about how you're going to get to work. Uh, whether it's exercising and eating right, whatever you, accomplishment you have in life is going to require some self-discipline. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole science around doing self-discipline. Mm -hmm. you know? and, more, and more and more of it's being written after some, uh, some things recently, uh, what, uh, Atomic Habits and, and another one I'm just peeping at last night. But it, it was about dealing with the anxiety and seeing it, anxiety as a positive thing okay. that helps gives us direction rather than just just a threat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, so that that's number three is top of. One of the things I love about what we call this path is there's nobody that tells you you need to do this, you need to do that. They teach you how to do what you do, but you decide what disciplines you're going to do when, like that. And then the, the, the fourth one is karma. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people think of karma as retribution, but karma is the understanding that the universe has order to it. Mm -hmm. And anything you put out is going to have a reaction to it. So karma is about right thoughts, right speech, and right action. Because if that's what you're using, that's what you're going to get back. Mm -hmm. So instead of being allowing oneself to be programmed um, by... Uh, social media and all of these 
um, commercials that we see and uh, these institutions that, that, that we um, uh, interact with, we can make some our own decisions about what we're going to put on our mind. Am I going to look at the glass as being half empty or half full? Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, add a topper, I may add a discipline, or when I get up in the morning, I'm going to say three things I'm grateful for, rather than look at what's wrong, I'm looking at what's right. Mm -hmm. So that's common. And the third, the, the fifth one is <laughs> kind of where we started. The, the fifth one is what we call swadaya. Swadaya is self-study. Self-study. It answers some of the it's some of the existential questions. Mm -hmm. Who am I really? You know, I know some people call me doctor. Some people call me Hank. You know, some some people call me brother. You, you know, who am I really? You know, and why was I made this way? Mm -hmm. I could say I found I'm, I'm not a good technician, but when it comes to um, intrapersonal or uh, interpersonal intelligence is I'm pretty, pretty good at, at oh. that. So wh why was I made that way? And what is my mission in life? The assumption is that each one of us is made a certain way because we have a mission that has to do with service to the larger group. And it doesn't have to mean you're on television, you're going to have a president, but everybody brings something to the party when we are being ourselves and working with compassion, empathy, out of the love that's in our hearts, then we bring something to the table with whoever we interact with. So that's quick, but that's what we call the five-fold path which begins to be integrated into these models that, you know, we talked about enriched structural family therapy into psychotherapy, and now a larger, um, a, a larger uh, cohort called indigenous psychotherapy. Understanding psychotherapy didn't start 200 years ago with, with Freud and, and Jung. Um, I mean, they did some good stuff and we appreciate that. But humans have been on this planet at least 200,000 years. Mm -hmm. And every community had natural healers, mm -hmm. whether they were called grandpa or lady down the street or seer or, 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 or whatever, shaman. They, they were always healers involved. Mm -hmm. So it's like incorporating that ancient knowledge into our current knowledge. And, and, and using that to deal with more people in a culturally competent, inclusive way. Culturally competent. I mean, some of the models that get taught so frequently, um, I remember when I, when, when I came out of school, I was in graduate school and we would, and we were uh, doing role plays and my instructor saw me do a role play and gave me a job working for Catholic Charities. Mm -hmm. And I'm working out in Baltimore County uh, at a Catholic parish and I'm seeing white families, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm being a super therapist because there's two parent families, they're coming in and I'm, you know, giving them home assignments and whatever and everything is going well. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm a super therapist. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I started working downtown from a family life for people who were coming to therapy because of legal means, not because they wanted to, mm -hmm. who, who didn't see it all the time as valuable. Mm -hmm. And I found out that the skills I was using for that motivated um, population who were acclimated to this Western culture, those skills didn't work downtown. Mm -hmm. I had to be more interpersonal. I had to be more present. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't just give them um, a diagnosis and some and some thoughts they had to uh, follow, you know, uh, we call cognitive behavioral. No. I had to be emotionally present, supported, connected in a genuine way. Because one of the uh, assumptions of these 
indigenous ways of working. The real transfer is, is about transferring energy. What you bring to the party is your energy. Uh -huh. So you can't just tell somebody else what to do. Uh -huh. you, you, you can't just be looking at what's wrong with people. Mm -hmm. And it can't be all about them because you have to be practicing yourself what you're trying to share with them uh -huh. to make it real and genuine. Uh -huh. But that's how a lot of the, this, this got started. This is about a spiritual path that I was blessed to become about a, a, a participant in 50 years ago that's taken me all over the planet, mm -hmm. meeting with other p people and learning more about this path and also teaching this thing. So there's, uh, I mean, there's only two continents really I haven't been on, but India and, and West Africa and Eastern Europe and all over the Caribbean and uh -huh. Central America and all over the United States, there are people who uh, do these practices that we interact with because things are changing very rapidly on this planet. And these things were given at this time to help us transition, to help us transition. To, most of us are not clear we live in a dirty fishbowl. There's so much pollution from the industrialization of the last uh, 150, 200 years. There's so much pollution that it affects us mentally, emotionally, physically, and ultimately spiritually. So when you can clean the atmosphere and when you do these processes, clean the atmosphere, everything grows better. The plants grow better, the animals grow better, and certainly the, the humans grow better, like that. So it was given for this time, you know, this time of transition. And when I say time of transition, you know, all the stats say the incidence of depression, anxiety are going up, mm -hmm. and even suicide with young people in certain populations. At some level, anxiety, and depression are wake-up calls. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. They're wake-up calls to say, you need to shift gears. Something is not working for you. Uh -huh. So maybe you need to process some things and let some things go, add some new skills, um, put in some, some toppers, some self-disciplines or something, but you need to shift gears uh -huh. because when you're sitting there and you can't move and you're feeling so bad about things, that says something's not working. When you're feeling anxious all the time and everything is getting to you and you're angry and you're upset, because anger is, anxiety is ultimately about fear. Uh -huh. That's an indication that something is not working for you. Uh -huh. And it's not our job to tell you what's working for you, but it's our job as therapist to lead you through a process of unpacking self-discovery and then looking at some options in terms of what may be suited for you. Again, what may be inside of you that you may or may not be aware of and how to tap into it. Like really doing the work on self, right? Yes. And so when I hear this idea of doing self work i'm also hearing this this theme in 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 this dialogue conversation um that you're having that there's also this not changing of self but also changing of the atmosphere changing of the society at large um and i'm curious to do you think there's if everybody works on themselves and it changes the world, or do you think there's, uh, what's the approach? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll go with what you, what you say. One of the illusions of this Western way of looking at things is the separation. Everything is interconnected. There's nothing that happens on this planet that doesn't affect everybody on the planet. So when we can do that and so to say, do our work inside, it affects what happens outside. We attract 
what we need in terms of lessons. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing my my interpersonal work uh -huh. inside and I'm going from being looking at what's wrong, uh, waddling in my guilt and my shame and, and, and being upset about stuff uh -huh. to being in a, a, mo a mode of appreciation, of gratitude, uh -huh. you know, uh, and, and such, then I'm I'm going to draw things to me according to accordingly. Uh -huh. So I'm, I can draw more strife and troubles, or I can draw draw, uh, draw some joy, some satisfaction, some some um, reinforcement to me, depending on where I'm focused at, mm -hmm. like that. So none of us is just the innocent victim. Mm -hmm. We all participate in our situation. What's the old saying? Sins of omission, same sins of commission. Mm -hmm. That's or another way of saying it. We all have some agency to make some decisions about how we're going to deal with stuff. Not what's going to happen. I mean, somebody could come in here right now and take us all and throw us in jail for 27 years. Mm -hmm. We may not have a choice about that, mm -hmm. but we have choice about how we do our time. Mm -hmm. You can come out twice as crazy as you went in, mm -hmm. or you can come out, you know, like like Nelson Mandela, you know. Enlightened, in better shape to, to 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 help and 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 with a deeper understanding of what was going on. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, I mean, some would say the trade-off that Nelson Mandela, um, uh, when he chose, you know, to come free and some of the things that he gave up wasn't beneficial in the long haul. Um, so, just an example, he gave up a lot of Europeans. Um, uh, had weapons and things of that nature um, that if the government was to shift in free Mandela and, you know, do all those type of things and he become uh, a figure of power that you could you could have this place, but you have to relinquish these things that made well, this system, quote unquote, powerful. So they're like saying that he kind of gave up, they gave up a lot and received not much. I, I, I believe he did the best he could with what he had mm -hmm. at the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I believe most of us are doing that. Mm -hmm. The issue is how do I increase my capacity to do the right thing, mm -hmm. to see clearly, you know, to manifest my, my destiny. Mm -hmm. That's internal work. That's focus. That's me being um, disciplined about what goes in, because what goes in is what's going to come out. Mm -hmm. That's about me learning to process my emotions. Emotions are messengers. They give us guidance. So, you know, I can increase my capacity by doing my internal work. Does that mean everything that I do is going to be the way I want it to be? No. Mm -hmm. We ain't in charge. <laughs> we, our job is to submit to a higher order, mm -hmm. you know, so it may not be dependent on all of what I do. We call that non-attachment. We've talked about that before. My job is to do the best I can do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let the rest go. Yes. One of the setups in our society is measuring everything by outcomes, outcomes, outcomes. That's a setup. You can't control outcomes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the effort to control creates more frustration, more anxiety, more angst in the popu population. Mm -hmm. Only thing you in charge of is how you act, how you respond. Mm -hmm. So you can decide that I'm going to do this and I'm going to do, do that. This is where I'm going to stand. King, what did he say? Look, I've been to the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I might not get there with you. I might not have the outcome, mm -hmm. you know, but this this is where I stand. Mm -hmm. This is what I bring to the party. This is what I believe in. Mm -hmm. And this is where I, I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're okay? saying this is a part of the process. Yeah. And it's about being process oriented, mm -hmm. being focused on more. You have your goal. Mm -hmm. But your focus is on the journey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're working toward your goal, mm -hmm. but you're not measuring your success 
by whether you meet your goal. Mm -hmm. It's whether you can be true to your highest values, mm -hmm. whether you can be the best version of yourself, mm -hmm. whether you can continually grow, mm -hmm. receive the, the instructions, the lessons, the messages from the universe and incorporate them into your being. You know, and just going back to the example of um, Mandela, you know, I struggle with um, some of the critique in a sense, um, especially since we know how what he did to, it even led him to be in prison. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, he literally did some things and uh, admitted to doing some things that was totally the opposite. I mean, like really like he did the he literally was blowing things up. So like I so I, I struggle with people to say this person who put all of that on the line. I mean, all he, he went to that great of length, mm -hmm. you know, to now have some time to sit still and, and, and really think to say that he's a sellout. You know, I, I kind of struggle with that that conversation. Well, I, again, <laughs> I, I don't think it's helpful to, to judge people. Yeah. You know? Uh, um, if if you have a lesson in there, mm -hmm. then you take the lesson and you move forward. Mm -hmm. But critiquing and judging, uh, judging other people, we, we we that becomes an energy that we use in society. Mm -hmm. I validate myself by how I can pick apart everything that goes on. Everybody, so I can say how this one is not being consistent, mm -hmm. and that one could have done better. And you know. I'm tearing stuff down all the time. Mm -hmm. That's really about me trying to build myself up, mm -hmm. you know, as a, instead and just say, thank you for your effort. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you for, you know, uh, uh, what you tried to do. You know, thank you for, for, for your vision. None of us, my, my impression is this planet wasn't put here for, for people who are already perfect, mm -hmm. that it's a school. So we all have something to learn. We can all grow in the process. And when we get into the issue of criticizing, judging, putting folks down, so uh, we're buying into the things that are sabotaging us all. Right. And I think that goes back to when I look at like he or people like him because he's just an example in this case because we all have been these examples are doing the best with what we have it. yes now i'm gonna tell you where I, I really do struggle though um personally me is that um when i feel like sometimes when we speak like this we throw everybody in the same box so so if there's a brother or sister in the community who's selling poison to the community, I mean, literally mm -hmm. selling, selling poison to the community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I tell someone this person is selling poison, and then they use and they say, well, we all, we all have flaws. And I'm saying, no, I'm, not, I, I'm not denying that we don't have flaws. I'm saying he is literally consciously selling poison to the community. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I am not, and I'm part of my words, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm differentiating between a flaw and a fraud. So if you're selling hope in the uh, guise of poison, I feel like there's some level, there, there's some worthy of calling that out to protect the village. Again, if you, if you have to work with that person, mm -hmm. say, I think it's going it's to be easier if you start with the assumption that there's goodness in there mm -hmm. and that person has good intentions. Mm -hmm. Their intentions is they're trying to make a living. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they, they, they're trying to run a business. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're trying to meet their, their, basic, their basic needs. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they aren't accountable. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean all of their behaviors are acceptable. Mm -hmm. That means if you get off the surface, you recognize He's trying to do the same thing I'm doing. Mm -hmm. He may be doing it differently because his experience is different. Mm -hmm. He may not have had the support that I had. Mm -hmm. He may not have had uh, the nurturance, the love, mm -hmm. you know, education mm -hmm. that I had. So I, I'm not, I'm not judging him. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I accept his behavior. So at some level, it's about separating a person from the behavior. Right. 
Right. Because when a person is doing something negative, unhealthy to other people, they're trapped in it themselves. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? And you mean that the person who's um, conducting these behaviors is trapped in it and yes. as well as the people that he or she is trapping? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. And I, and I you know, because um, I see this on a micro and a macro, you know, because um, a lot of times I work with people who um, who experience domestic violence, mm -hmm. and and it's a very interesting thing when you see the mind, the manipulated, how one has manipulated their mind in a sense to believe that they are doing whatever that they're doing all right, and the, and, and they need to take the abuse, and that because they're not because they they deserve the abuse even and if you would just do things differently that i wouldn't abuse you or not even use those words you the, me smacking you me calling out your name me just utilizing you sexually me doing all these things this is your fault and then when you and, and as, as a therapist you have to really walk slowly with that individual because that person comes in literally taking that as their fault, not that their fault that they're staying in it or what have you, but their fault that they deserve it in the sense because they believe in this other person more than they believe in themselves. Gotcha. And I see that on a micro. And then I also see that on a macro in our community with people who sell us hope. And this hope that they sell is lots of time very divisive hope because this or that type of um, narratives are very uh, enticing to us, um, uh, us against them. And even if it's not even true, you know, um, I, I can't, I can't think of where I'm trying to go here, but a high level of um, loyalty to those who are hurting them. Mm hmm. And um, I forgot what's going. On. But we'll just sing that down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, oh, so what? What I'm saying is, so me even being trained in that and working with people, I work on both sides: those who abuse and those who receive the abuse. Mm -hmm. And many times, so I have empathy. I do have empathy for those who abuse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that does not mean that I will not help that person even learn if they don't, if they're unconscious or conscious that you are hurting people. And what you're doing is not because of the other person. Uh -huh. It may be triggered by the other person, uh -huh. but it's about you. Yeah. That thing of that person, that person looking outside of ourselves, that's just projection. Uh -huh. That all that reflects is our conflicts with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I, I hate a lie and a thief. Mm -hmm. What I'm really saying is I hate the part of me that lies and steals. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't do it in a, in a grandiose way, mm -hmm. or maybe I don't do it um, uh, in, in an obvious way, but I hate the part of me that's not being true to my, my high, higher values. But rather than looking at me, I'm looking at you and, and saying that, that you're the problem. Mental health growth starts when we can own our stuff. The question is, what is my part in this? Mm -hmm. N again, none of us is the innocent. What is my part in this? Mm -hmm. D uh, did I attract some of this by my negative thinking about myself? Mm -hmm. Because, you, you know, you can... <laughs> You can change mates, go to another country, you know, get, get, get another job and still in there with the same uh, dynamics wherever you go until you change. You're going to attract the same kind of mates wherever you go until you do something different with you. So Brother Allstar comes in there and he says, he's not saying I hate a lie and a thief. But what he is saying is that's not true. And he's telling his son. That's not true. Um, watch out for that. Is that the same thing as saying, I hate a lie and a thief? Well, 
I think what you're really saying is, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I, I like that better because that's saying, this is where I am. Mm -hmm. This is how I see it. Mm -hmm. And you have a right to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can share that with whoever you want to share it with. Mm -hmm. But to call it the ultimate truth or the ultimate lie, um, I think that's setting up that dynamic of right and wrong that we fight about so often. We get caught up in, I'm right and, and you're wrong. And the truth of the matter is, few of us are 100% either way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you still have the right to say, I don't like that, or I don't believe that, or I don't participate in that. So, you know, so the idea is like, so he, someone's saying, here's gasoline, drink this, and uh, you'll live 20 more years. And I know it's gasoline, and I say, you drink that, you might die. Mm -hmm. Then we'll, you know, I mean, that's just a fact. Um, facts or social agreements. <laughs> I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know that everybody, everybody on the planet can't drink gasoline. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. I know I'd be concerned about you drinking that. Mm -hmm. I, so you will likely die. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. You, your perception. Again, moving from the emphatic, meaning, meaning for this the way it is, when you say these, these hard facts to, mm -hmm. you no, know, this is the way I see it. Mm -hmm. And I'm offering it to you. And then, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. But when we cut those hard lines, the, what we encourage is defensiveness on the other side and mm -hmm. it breaks down communication. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's interesting, Doc. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on. Are you saying that there's no, that there's nothing that you will want to tell your child not to do? Um, oh, there's a, lots of things I would tell them I, would, I don't want them to do. Yeah. I'm saying like, like, for example, you say, well, if you take this gun <laughs> and you pull this trigger, you know, uh, it's likely that that bullet might go through your brain and kill you. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of advice? I know this is extreme, but it's some, you know, because I know lots of things and I get the idea of some things, most things that we argue about are not necessarily um, they're in the spectrum. So, if your child has a gun mm -hmm. and has it to his head, and you're just telling them, don't shoot yourself, you know, mm -hmm. or, or that's crazy or what, whatever, mm -hmm. you're not hearing them. So many people are acting out mm -hmm. na nowadays mm -hmm. because they don't feel heard or attended to, especially young people. Mm -hmm. To me, a lot of the, the suicide. So, I think we do better when we try to understand from that other person's, person's perspective. The, the, the word you used earlier, empathy. Mm -hmm. Empathy. That means I, I have to be strong enough to go into your world, mm -hmm. understand it from your perspective, mm -hmm. and then share with you what I think might be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm contextualizing it a little different, though. Okay. I think where it's okay, so this person doesn't know. He doesn't know. He's not, it's not about depression or anxiety or feeling hurt or being suicidal. It's just he just doesn't believe that putting a bullet through his head will kill him or kill somebody else. Like he, he's under this spell. Like mm -hmm. He says that it won't kill anybody. Mm -hmm. And now, I, you know, of course, you can't force somebody you have to take care of the person, but to really try to have that conversation with them because you want to live. Your goal is to live. The mm -hmm. goal is to live. His goal is to live. And okay. this is giving him 20 more years. I know this is a pretty interesting scenario, right? But now he's believing that by doing such is going to uh, give him 20 more years, although you know the likelihood of that is 
statistically um, less than likely. Would you, would you at least would you share with him the statistics? <laughs> I mean, not like he's depressed and you're trying to convince him, but just share. And if he would yeah. take your advice. Yeah. Again, it's, it's how you do it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the energy that you bring to the party. Mm -hmm. Am I just telling you what to do and shutting you down because I'm right and you're wrong? Yeah. Or am I compassionately tr trying to assist you, mm -hmm. understand where you're coming from, mm -hmm. and, and set some limits and boundaries mm -hmm. so, so that you'll be okay? Oh, okay, yeah. And I think my, my thoughts are that lots of times people will say, that if you point those things out, that's a problem. And th that's how it comes across. Maybe not if, not you. Mm -hmm. We say, well, if, like, for example, the whole idea, if you now, if you say something in the line of to protect you, you or your family from some outside force that's bringing something in to hurt them if you call if you even address it no matter if you do it in a calm way in a compassionate way or what have you that you have no right and you and that's what it sounds like a lot of times people you have no if you if you even identify it as a potential threat then now you're looking at somebody else versus looking at what you, the work you need to do that's how it comes across. That's how many people actually present it, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I think it's about how you share. Mm -hmm. You can be emphatic, mm -hmm. as clear mm -hmm. as possible. The, the object is not to get caught up in your power if you're trying to serve that other person by assisting them. You know, I'm, I'm just thinking about those who will listen and the things that go through their that will go through their mind. Like another thing that will go like people say, everybody's innately good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I say that's the way I see it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and it's but, from the framework too, right? From the frame from the framework, yeah. But you know, as Sri Vasant said the brother who who brought a lot of these teachings to uh -huh. us and other places uh -huh. be your own scientist uh -huh. check it out for yourself uh -huh. you know s do your own research uh -huh. to see if you know if you see somebody with a behavior that really bothers you see if you can look deep enough to see it's a real person in there uh -huh. with some with some real needs Mm -hmm. Behavior is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. The way they're going about thinking about things are, are may not be healthy, but there's a, there's a person in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's like, you, you hear the term, it's the same to me as the terms where they say, uh, God don't make no junk. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all divine in nature. We may not act like it, we may not even realize it mm -hmm. at times, but that, that may not change it. Um, so I know you're one of the people you, t you, you examples that you utilize in the past, and he's a very uh, hot topic nowadays. But you know, he's easy to talk about. <laughs> Donald Trump, right? So people, um, there's even uh, I forgot what the, the committee is called, but uh, is a uh, I guess a conglomeration of mental health workers have come out and especially psychiatrists and other mm -hmm. mental health people have come out and diagnosed Trump. Mm -hmm. And they, I guess, what is it called? The Goldwater rule or something like that, that they're uh, saying that they should not have to be down to this Goldwater rule that is saying they should not diagnose public fi figures. So people are saying that Trump is narcissistic, not narcissistic, the general term they're saying he's, he's he has narcissistic personality disorder. And so with that, they are saying um, they feel like he's a danger and a threat to society. Mm -hmm. They feel like that he may uh, pull the trigger. Or what are, you, what are your thoughts about some of that? Um, 
I, I don't see Trump as the problem. Mm -hmm. I see him as a symptom. Mm -hmm. The problem is so many people feel alienated and are functioning out of their fears and are willing to do anything to uh, address things that are motivated by their fears. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, I mean, Trump said it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. He said he could kill somebody in the middle of the street and stuff. They wouldn't care. He said he wouldn't care? A lot of his folks would not care. Okay. You know, because what they're concerned about is their perception of their welfare. Mm -hmm. Meeting those needs, uh, you know, on that hierarchy of needs mm -hmm. around. Uh, uh, of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, they're concerned about that. Mm -hmm. and, and they're not as concerned about how they do it. They're just concerned about meeting those needs. Mm -hmm. And they see him as a vehicle to do that. The only reason he could step in is because so many people feel alienated, disempowered, and are functioning out of their fears. On a larger system, mm -hmm. if you look at the news, whether it's left or right, so much of it is fear oriented. Mm -hmm. So again, it keeps people looking at what they don't want to do mm -hmm. as opposed to what they do want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who they think they are not and what they can't deal with mm -hmm. as opposed to who they think they re really are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, we created Trump. Mm -hmm by how we have been dealing with society. And you know, there's, there's more and more Trumps all around the planet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At the same time, I think we're at the end of this cycle. Mm -hmm. This stuff is falling apart. I mean, you've heard my analogy before. We, it, we, we had a, we, we, uh, a game of Monopoly where, you know, um, somebody's got Park Place and bought Boardwalk and all the money is in, in, in one place. And the rest of us are just playing because we don't know how to get, the, get out of the game. But as such, it's falling. The system is falling apart. Mm -hmm. So I can spend my time fighting against the system mm -hmm. or I can spend my time fighting for life. Life being love on the planet. Again, from the inside out, mm -hmm. manifesting those higher values. Because anything I'm fighting against, I am becoming part of that. So we're not, we have to do something different. We have to do something different. Um, we've been having wars on this, on this planet for quite some time now, or one group dominating another uh, physically. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And it, it don't work. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It, it, it just doesn't work. Uh -huh. and, and the only difference right now is the whole planet is so interconnected. So it's everybody's kind of in, in it together in a deeper way than it's ever been. But the systems are not designed to take care of people and the methodologies are worn out that have been being used. So what does that difference look like to you, Doc? What does that difference look like to you? We have to um, do community. Uh -huh. First with ourselves uh -huh. and then some like-minded people become more aut autonomous, you know? Uh -huh. And that might include not watching some, so much news. That might include growing your own food. That, that might include um, mm -hmm. pr praying together or whatever. But, mm -hmm. but we need to go after the things that work for us on the inside that help us be the better versions of ourselves. But if you're only looking at criticizing, fussing at, the external things, then you are empowering them on your inside. So Dr. Um, Alessia Kiyosante speaks about um, these um, consciousness. Um, mm -hmm. Did I speak about that the first time I was here? I don't remember. So he speaks about this consciousness of oppression, 
And he says that many times we get stuck at these levels of thinking and, and some about circles and some about poems and about dramas and all these different things. But he says it's also the, the part that we overlook is this consciousness of victory. And mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like it's in alignment with what you're saying as far as, I mean, it's one thing to identify these things and that's okay, but if we get stuck there, we become part of the problem. Yes, 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 yes. If I spend all, we, <laughs> When you, you turn on TV, no matter what channel, mm -hmm. and they talk about Trump, 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 mm -hmm. as opposed to, how should I say, some of the things that will help people mm -hmm. to be better on the inside, you know, of how to um, manifest your destiny, how to uh, assess your values, or your behavior, and and move toward those in a healthy way and examples and, uh -huh. and, and resources and, and whatever. Uh -huh. So r right now, all, all they seem to want is for us to watch. So we can watch some of those, you know, four to the 10,000 commercials that are shown every uh -huh. day. Uh -huh. So we can buy the products and be consumers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's where our power is. That's how we buy in being more conscious consumers. Mm -hmm. So with that, see, uh, I'm hearing, um, just and be clear for the people, it's not that we can't identify some of our issues, because you're yeah. clearly identifying the issue right here. Mm -hmm. And, but it's, we gotta do more than just identify it. Yes, yes. But then what do you do after you identify the issue? Do you continue to participate in this issue, or do you build something anew? You ask yourself, how do I participate? Uh -huh. And then that'll give you some options. So participation for me might be, maybe um, instead of, instead of you know, um, buying f um, a half dozen pair of tennis this year, maybe I just buy two. Come down. So I'm not feeding the, the, the system. Uh -huh, you know? uh -huh, uh -huh. And maybe I, I save some of that money or, 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 or learn to grow a tomato, and, uh -huh. you know, or, 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 or learn to do some, um, some, some qigong or tai chi, something to, uh -huh. to, to calm my spirit uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. So recognize the issue, how I participate by the things I do and don't do uh -huh. and and do some topper to make some shifts uh -huh. in some of that. Uh -huh. Topper again? Topper. What does it mean? Self-discipline. Self-discipline. So, self-discipline. I, 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 can, I can keep doing that, and I want you, them to do something different in that one, and this one, and that one. Oh, I can say, hey, I need to do something different. Yeah, I, I'm at the stage of life. <laughs> I'm in the stage of life when I say, you know, I feel, I feel that I can do both, right? I can identify the issue and also say, you know, and not get caught up in the issue. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're all in the system, mm -hmm. but also say that I'm, I'm just personally, I'm going to identify the issue, even if the issue is me, mm -hmm. right? As much as I can. And then also say, but what can I do about that? What can I do differently? How do, how do I guess you just even said it. Mm -hmm. How do I not get caught up in fueling the, the problem that I'm trying to rid? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that needs to be an ongoing process. Anytime any of us has a, a belief and ideal that we can't periodically reassess, mm -hmm. we don't have that belief or ideal. Mm -hmm. It has us. Yeah. Because right now, as I know I'm make sure that you have if you have anything else to say, because like right now I'm having a lot of lectures come, come to, to, to Tina Holistic Wellness Center. And the interesting thing I'm noticing is that some of them, they all, they're kind of like, and I appreciate it, they have their, their stances on things. Mm -hmm. And then they might say, so what do you think? I say, well, I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so they get upset. Mm -hmm. A little, well, no, you gotta think. So. I said, well, I'm not that intelligent. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I mean, I, I, you know, so this idea of capitalism and socialism and all this and all that, like, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to get the information from y'all because y'all seem to know 
more than I know. So I'm just trying to learn. So I'm bringing you here and everybody here. Maybe we can sit down and have a conversation about this. But what I'm realizing and what you're saying, even the, the supports for even what you're saying, that a lot of people struggle, although they have these strong opinions, they struggle sitting down and having discussion with one another about it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's key, mm -hmm. how we connect with one another, how we support each other. How, you know, the, the biggest communication skill it's not talking, it's listening. Mm -hmm. When we can learn to listen and understand from that person's perspective, doesn't mean we sanction it, doesn't mean we're on board, but that means at least I understand where, where he or she is, and then I can respond accordingly. But so often we, we get, like I say, in this right and wrong thing, well, I'm not even listening to the other person. I'm just promoting my way of seeing things. Yeah. So I appreciate that, Doc. And um, and what I've been on in this journey of mine is, you know, looking at the individual work that needs to be done, not just in me, but also as a psychotherapist working with other people, that individual work, but also looking at that community work and even on a societal level. And I think many times, like thoughts like the ones that you're presenting here are not often really considered, I'm not saying no one considers, but it's very difficult for warring sides to consider these these thoughts because it's coming from that place of, they come out of that place of fear that you speak about. But I feel like that thought needs to be considered um, for healing because as we talk about the, what, what, what is it? Uh, so is below, so is, I, I always mess as up. As above, so below. As, as above, so below, within and without and all that type of thing, right? And many times we we miss those principles when we're looking at what is good for individuals are also is also potentially good for societies. And, and what I hear from you is you see your mission as getting people together to have these conversations, not shaping the conversations, but facilitating the dialogue. Absolutely. Part part of the mission is yes. And I, I I remember some few years ago you told me said so that you, that might be your that might be a, something for you to do and I was like nah that's a lot I was <laughs> I was like it takes a lot of self work let's let's keep it there it takes a lot of self work because um, to even do this but uh, I'm 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 serious it takes a lot I mean I'm finding myself in between some very just to keep it candid very very heated individuals i mean who like and i'm fine you know what they called me mm. someone one of them called me the the prince of peace mm. they, they said ah, you just want to be the prince of peace i said <laughs> you, you said thank you i said i did <laughs> I, said, I said because literally in the moment i don't feel like the prince of peace but it's letting me know i must be doing something right because i feel like i'm agitating a bit but I'm, I'm not agitating for war. I'm, ag I'm agitating to kind of like, not really as I'm feeling, you know how you like, I don't want to be adding to this, you know, that type of thing. But at the end of the day, that I did say thank you. And I say, it, it, at least that affirmed that I'm doing something right. That you're doing something. Yeah. Um, if everybody gets you all the time, mm -hmm. then you're probably not doing very much. I tell you. You don't, you don't have that problem. No, I have that problem. I'm telling you, I, 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 I have to use all, look, they say you don't teach you nothing. I have to, do, have to use all my emotional skills because sometimes my ego wants to come up and just say, shut up. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, it's, it's like, okay. You know, I want to say, look, you think, you know, I, but I, I do my deep breathing and. <laughs> well, this, just let me say that it is so valuable for the community to have a space like the one that you provide, mm -hmm. where people can come together mm -hmm. and express themselves, nurture each other, share like that. That's that's invaluable. Mm -hmm. That's invaluable. So I so I, I I thank you for that, and 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 I'm, I'm, with the knowledge that it's not easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
it, it's not easy, but uh, it's necessary. Yeah, and it's meaningful too. Um, uh -huh. I appreciate it um, even more so after um, not doing so much. And like it's the summer now, so I'm a little bit more free. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have, I only, I'm only teaching one class, and I'm, I'm not returning full time. I, I, maybe if I if I, if, if copping if somebody calls me, right? Cop, you know, you watch out. You know, but um, but getting back in closing, um, anything that you want to leave the listeners, the viewers, um, anything you might have left out, just some wisdom, just to close this out and cap it off. I think I'll just say, just take care of yourselves. You know, keep working on you. Is that unpack your thing? Everything that's happened to you has happened to teach you something has happened to increase your awareness. Although some of it may be unpleasant, uh, 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 um, maybe difficult, maybe may scary, maybe hurtful. But at some level, when you can open those doors and understand that the universe is always working with us, working for us, working for us, not take those things so personally that means unpack them see what the lessons are the messages so you can move forward and continue to refine your lifestyle so it so it supports your highest values so it supports your highest behaviors and you can be the best version of you because the energy you bring to the party helps us all so thank you and bless blessings to you. All right, family. Like, share, subscribe. Um, Doc, I know on the first one, just in case, um, you know, it fits. Um, in this one, just uh, let the family know how they can uh, get in contact with you. My, my organization is called Rafiki Consortium LLC. Phone number is 410-521-5818. Four ten five two one five eight one eight, and my um, email address is Hank Greg forty nine at Gmail. That's Hank H A N K G R E G four nine at Gmail dot com. All right, that enough. I appreciate it. Yes, yeah. thank you. All right, peace. <laughs>